Okay, guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and this is the third <laughs> take at trying to produce this video, and it just hasn't been working for me. So, hopefully, this one is a bit better. Anyway, got a few topics I want to cover off on today: uh, the new previews that happened overnight, uh, as well as talking about Malagos the Twisted and some stuff with Heresy that concerns me. So, Malagos, I want to issue a retraction of sorts with this model because. I think I owe an apology in regards to he is in 30k power armor. It doesn't look it at all to me from the front. It doesn't look like Mark III at all. Yeah, okay, there's trim on the armor, but the trim is nothing like Mark III armor. It doesn't have any of the rivets in any of the right spots, but the back half of the legs are Mark III. So it's a custom set of Mark III that just happens to look from the front like a 40k power armor. So be it. But I was wrong. And that's the important thing here. So there's that. Um, the backpack as well still looks retarded. It looks crap. So if I was to buy this model, which no, I'm not going to. But if I was, I would definitely change that backpack out for something else. Garvey Logan has an excellent backpack. I'd probably put that one on him instead. Much nicer power pack than this. Um... But yeah, there's something else this model has started to usher in. And it's something I also noticed with those leaks we saw of the potential plastic heresy miniatures. And that is the scale. The scale is screwed. Now, why do I say that? Well, this model is on a tactical rock, that's true. But he's also hunched over, which essentially hunches him about the height of the tactical rock his right foot is placed on, which is the one that gives him his height. And... Even so, his backpack and head is a good head odd taller than a cataphracty terminator such as the Justerian. So, why is the scale an issue for me? Well, so glad you asked. Scale is not a problem in 30k to me, because the Space Marines in 30k make up the majority of the infantry, apart from the Solar Auxilia range and maybe some carryovers for say, the Militia and Colts for 40k. Most of the infantry that's human-sized in 30k is Marine-based. So, true scaling was never a thing that was needed for them. But here we have a model who is well and truly in that new Chaos Space Marine scale. So, he is a lot bigger. Now, I get it. Some people are really into that. But my big thing is, why? Why are they into that? And the reason I ask this is, what is gained from increasing the scale here? Because, like I said, in regular 40k, there's all these other factions of human-sized models, and the Marines look tiny next to them. In 30k, that's not an issue. In 30k, the Marines are the bulk of the range, and there's so few humans in other ranges that it's very rare that the scale actually plays an issue. So true scaling the infantry in 30k to me is no real gain to be had especially when you consider the fact that you're now going to introduce two new problems with this new scale. The first of which is the vehicles. The vehicles are now going to be completely screwed for scale because you thought a rhino looked small before. Well, the rhino is going to look very, very small now. Uh, same thing goes for the land radar. Same thing goes for the Spartan. You're going to tell me Spartan's going to hold 25 models when you can't even put 25 models into the same area that a Spartan fills base to base. Like, it's, it's not great. And then on top of that, the second problem is this. These are your elite legion units in many cases. And as you can see, they're resin and they're sold at Forge World. So what happens when you come along and you start putting your new scale models into the same army as, say, these World Eaters uh, Rampages? or the Medusa and Immortals, who are now going to be over a head shorter, or about a head shorter, because Forge World resins shrink, and they're usually a tiny bit smaller than Games Workshop Plastics on the best of days. You've introduced a scale issue where there was no scale issue before. And that's why I see it as no net gain. You can say what you will about improving scale for 40k, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't really matter to me. It's a non-issue. The issue here is that there was no scale problem before. 
you've now introduced one because your new range of models, your new range of plastics potentially, are going to be a completely different scale to all of these resin units over a forge world, which means either a long time going around, uh, Anvils of Connor style, cutting legs and lengthening them and cutting torsos and lengthening them. And power play to you if that's what you want to do, and that's something that Jack loves to do, so good on him. But that's not for everyone. And it now means that there's going to be a disunity within armies where you have a range of infantry and tanks that are in their own scale, and another range of new infantry that's in their own scale, and these two things just don't sync up. It's going to look a bit silly in my opinion. Now, it doesn't mean there's any right or wrong answer to this. It's just a shame that, you know, it's not the time for it. They probably should have done the scale change back when they first did the heresy, if they were going to do it. Or at the latest, probably around the time they did the Betrayal at Kelth box set, use that as a good opportunity to introduce a proper new scale. Instead, the Mark IV Marines that came out in that box set were a smidge taller than the resins as it was. But they look like they're going to be a good head smaller than what there is now. So that is going to be a bit of a downer. It's going to be a shame seeing Terminators that are smaller than the Marines around them. Um, this reminds me of going back to the days of sort of 3rd edition. In 3rd edition 40k, the plastic Terminators at the time the Space Marines had were on 25mm bases. And they were smaller than the Marines around them. And when they finally got their 40 mil base Terminator upgrades with 4th edition Space Marines, everyone raved about it because Terminators finally looked imposing. And it's, it kind of feels like it's going that way again. You're going to have Marines who are the same size. And I've seen this before where people have tried to use 40k Thousand Suns miniatures in a 30k Thousand Suns army. And all their segment Terminators are all much shorter than the Rubric Marines next to them. And it just looks really weird. So, I see no gain to this whatsoever. Um, I don't think it's going to make the models easier to paint. Um, you can argue that it's cooler. I think that's a very subjective argument. Very much down to the opinion of the user. And I really think the ship has sailed on scale. And again it's going to look really weird when you have a rhino and the rhino looks even smaller next to them. Uh, and the crew in the rhino are a different scale and the Legion special units are a different scale and your special characters in your army that came out in the Horus Heresy character series are a different scale. And someone like Alexis Pollux, who's meant to be way bigger than the average Marine, you know, bigger than guys in Terminator Rum, is going to be the same height or slightly shorter than the Marines around him. It just... It's, there's no gain to be had here. I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, Melagos the Twisted should be this hunched over, shriveled up old man, as it were. And instead, Melagos is uh, he's now the tallest miniature in the Sons of Horus range after Horus. So, I don't know. I think that's silly. Um, yeah. Then, um, oh, we'll, we'll go over and look at these new releases here. So... Kill Team Octarius. Okay, that's interesting. Octarius is the world where the Tyranids, or the system, I should say, where the Tyranids uh, were launched directly into the Orcs. And we know how that ends because Gazkol steps in and basically finishes off the Tyranids. But with the unreliable narrator and the ever-evolving state, or should I say devolving state of Games Workshop's lore, their background universe where any novel they make may as well not be canon because they all contradict each other. Uh, who knows what's happening, essentially. Is Gaz Kalthraker involved? Uh, not yet, apparently. So, uh, Octarius. I suggested they looked at doing an Octarius campaign back in uh, November of last year, I do believe. Uh, and in fact, I started work and I'm quite way into an Octarius campaign book. The thing is, my Octarius campaign book is not a Kill Team campaign. It is a proper 40k uh, Imperial Armour style book. And the reason I did it that way is because I wanted to highlight the two factions with the least love at the time, which was the Orcs and the Tyranids. Now, the Orcs are getting a range of new models. Great, fantastic, happy for the Orc players. And look, the Imperial Guard 
uh, not exactly being lavish with love over the years. I mean, apart from gaunt ghosts and a few female heads, they haven't really got a lot lately. So, interesting that Imperial Guard and a Kill Team skirmish game would be what's chosen to highlight Octarius. Octarius shouldn't be a game that's revolving around Kill Team. It is a system-wide campaign that pits two massive Xenos Horde factions against one another. An apocalyptic sized campaign so it's it's almost they like they were on the cusp of getting my idea and doing something good with it and then they pissed on it at the last second and ruined it uh so i don't have too many positive things to say here but i don't need to it's not my fucking job to say positive things my job here is to say the honest thing and the honest thing is who needed this did you need an orc terrain set with orc scrap terrain for kill team no the kill team every six months it feels like there's a new kill team box which supersedes all the rules of the previous one it feels like don't need it it's just silly to me so you get some death core of krieg a little bit chunky if i'm honest um i thought the old death core of krieg was very slim but um that's not even a nitpick of the models i just they look chunky um how i feel about them is they look good so, yeah, great to see them. But clearly, these are monopose plastic models. They come this way, you can build them this way, and there is no other way you're allowed to build them. So that's going to suck, but it is what it is. Um, does this usher in a Death Core Creek range for 40k? I don't know, maybe. The thing is, if you want to fill out and flesh out a whole range for 40k Imperial Guard, well... That's a lot of equipment. You've got to do all the heavy weapons. You've got to do some tank crews for the different vehicles. Um, specific equipment as well, like Sentinels, stuff like that, can vary from uh, Guard Regiment to Guard Regiment. Take, for example, the Drop Sentinels, the Elysians, uh, Ketachan Sentinels, Regular Sentinels, Iron Company Sentinels, or Steel Legion, as it were. There's a lot of different things that can be done here. Death Corps Krieg, for example, will have a lot of emplaced weapons as opposed to uh, standardized armor. So you would need to introduce a bunch of, say, basilisk uh, gun platforms, things like that. Are they going to do that, or are they going to leave most of them range supplemental with Forge World? Even if they did go last chance to buy and got Thanos snapped out of existence, I don't know. But what we have in the last couple months here, and this is why I opened up the Imperial Guard page to have a look, is a really eclectic mix where... You've got a ridiculously expensive set of Cadian shock troops. So a horde army with very expensive infantry. Always a great idea, Games Workshop. Gaunt's Ghosts. Uh, yep, cool unit, cool models. But not any particular allegiance to any faction. So what are you, what are you doing with the guard range? Is sort of where my head's at here. Um, are they introducing a squad? For each of the different uh, Imperial Guard regiments, you know, Cadians, Vostroyans, whatever, or are they going to flesh out whole ranges? If they are, that is a huge undertaking. So it seems strange to me. Uh, or Acadians now stuck in limbo. The last thing they're ever going to get is this new pack, which has a bunch of different heads in it. I don't know. Um, it just seems like they don't know what they want to do with the Imperial Guard, therefore, is my conclusion. And the thing that gets me is the secrecy. There is no secrecy to be had here. If they say, you know, we're going to be releasing a bunch of Death Corps or Krieg stuff for the Imperial Guard, it's not like they have competition who is making the Death Corps of Krieg uh, in Games Workshop sort of bulk scale. There might be the occasional niche third party who makes some Death Corps miniatures, sure, but I, I doubt strongly that if Games Workshop said today, here is the lineup of Death Corps of Krieg, you're going to get a new infantry box with 20 Krieg Guardsmen in it. You're going to get an Earthshaker battery. You're going to get um, heavy weapon teams. You're going to get uh, Death Corps Krieg mortar teams. You know, stuff like that. If they said they were going to bring all that out, people would be thrilled because they'd know what was happening with the faction. But the Games Workshop doesn't do that. They do this weird radio silence thing where they'll show you a set of models and then you just got to hope that they're part of a wider release. And with what they've done with the Cadian Shock Troops, I don't see that happening, that wider release. 
So I'm a little concerned here. Is it just a 10-man box? Four kill teams to hype it up and to really help sell that box. That's my fear. That's my concern. That the whole reason that these guys exist is to try and sell this box. Uh, these are going to be scalped massively online. And yeah, they're going to get released on their own later on. As is usually the case. But as I've pointed out in previous videos, you're talking three to six months minimum before you see these kits released on their own because they don't want it to compete with their own product because they're slimy like that. Um, yeah, they're looking after their own best interests, but you know they have to throw a bone to the community as well. And what you're going to have right here is Decor Creed models, the only plastic ones you can get, and they're going to be locked away behind the paywall of this box until probably October, November, maybe even Christmas time, and then you'll start seeing these guys as a 10-pack available to you to buy for use in 40k games. I mean, call me wrong, but I haven't been wrong about them doing that in the past, so we're not going to start now. Uh, now, there's some good stuff. So, New York Commandos. They look great. Very much carrying on the old style of the Commandos, the fine cast ones, with the range of weapons, the war gear, the... We'll call them special ops stylings. Things like the scuba mask, the... Uh, the beanies, the knives, of course, everywhere. Yeah, it's cool. And it's great to see. Uh, it's great to see the orcs getting some love, and it has been so long, and I've said in several episodes how they really needed to be looked after and get some new miniatures. So nothing but positives to be had there. Good on them. Uh, yeah, orc terrain. I guess it's cool that they bring out orc terrain, but... Did we need a kill team box to do it in, or could they have released this terrain on its own? Also, how much is this terrain going to be? Is it going to be this side of $100, or the other side of it? I reckon it'll probably be weighted towards the other side of it, based on what the Necromunda terrain and such costs. Because looking at it, I'm thinking that the, the platform buildings will probably be their own box. The barricades will probably be their own box, and... The piles of trash on the ground around it will be their own box, knowing the way they do this stuff. But yeah, if it if it's not, feel free to come back in, I don't know, six months' time when this stuff drops. Uh, in fact, probably less than that, probably like three months' time when the, when the terrain drops. Uh, feel free to come back then and say, Maka, you were wrong. Um, it was $30 and you got it all in one box. I just, again, basing it off the Necromunda releases and the other Kill Team releases, that seems to be what they do. They don't include it all in one box. They break it up into separate boxes. So, yeah. Uh, Death Corps of Krieg, Veteran Guardsman Kill Team. Mm, and that concerns me as well, the fact that they're Veteran Guardsmen. So, are they going to be an elite squad you can take within your regular guard force, and that's why they're making veterans and not just being regular guardsmen for the Krieg. It's just just the thought. Anyway, um, I mean, if you're going to do a Death Corps of Krieg release, wouldn't you want to have some big Imperial Guard-focused campaign and make them a centerpiece of it? Wouldn't that be how you do it? You wouldn't release, I don't know, a 10-man squad as some, like, piddly little faction in a fucking skirmish game? Uh, it seems silly to me. Anyway, Warzone Octarius. So... This is the better part of it. This is where they recover some of that uh, lost prestige for me at the start of the article, where it's like, okay, they are doing an Octarius campaign, which is the exact idea I suggested uh, eight months ago. Uh, a little coincidental, that. But anyway, um, I'll take my commission in dollary dues, thanks. But why the Imperial Guard focus? The Death Watch did go there, a single squad of them. Uh, working with the Inquisitor. But that was it. There was no huge Imperial campaign on these worlds. They really... The whole reason they pointed the Tyranids and fired them into the Orc uh, force was in order to get the Orcs and the Tyranids to clash with one another. The Imperial forces getting caught up in the middle does not help the Imperium. <laughs> it just doesn't help them. Uh, they're just going to lose manpower fighting against two massive Horn armies. Uh, and I think the idea they're trying to sell with this campaign 
is that um, the Imperial Guard are helping to uh, keep the balance even so neither one side comes out on top of the other because they'll emerge stronger. Um, but again, that problem is solved by Cryptman in the background lore. So it's interesting that they chose to make Guard a focal point here. It seems like Guard and Orcs are what they're focusing on. In the Tyranids images, I don't see any new Tyranids, anything like that, um, which has me a little bit concerned that maybe the Tyranids aren't going to be the focus of the Octaris War, at least not in this initial book, because they're calling it Book 1, Rising Tide. Maybe that suggests there'll be a Book 2 and Book 3. Uh, maybe Book 2 will be a Tyranid Focus 1. They'll finally get a range revamp. They've probably been you know, one of the worst off, uh, Eldar being the worst. Um, yeah, that's that could be what's happening there. And that would, in fact, probably be the logical approach. Uh, book 3 will probably be the end of Octarius campaign with Gaz Cole coming in and finishing it off. I guess. Um, but yeah, so the, the squandered opportunity redeemed a little bit right there. But we have to see what they do with it. And there's no need to get the Imperium involved. Not every campaign needs every single faction in the game involved. Sometimes it's okay to have campaigns which revolve around smaller sub-factions. Okay? Um, for example, think of fantasy. You don't have Storm of Chaos in the old world where, uh, and then have the Tomb Kings squaring off against the Dark Elves or something. It's, it's not required. It doesn't make sense. Uh, same here. Uh, this looks like trash. Yep, cool. I don't care for this style of orcs at all. Opinions may differ, but does nothing for me. This new squig-heavy approach for 40k is dumb. Uh, this war boss is visual diarrhea. Looks horrid. Um, I like nothing about it. There are no redeeming features for me. Um, fuck. I want to find something to say a nice thing about. Uh, uh, the targeting squig on top with the with they've turned a squig into a living um, targeting computer. That's cool. Uh, yep, got to have that piece of terrain for every faction or fortification and the head of a gargant on the ground, apparently, as a boss hut. Um... This guy has a cool robot arm, I guess. Cool cyborg attachments. Mozrog and Big Chomper. The names are just getting worse. Why has he got Maori tattoos? The orcs always had more sort of Celtic style tribal tattoos than Maori tattoos, like Islander tattoos, are way too neat. See, basic swirls of blue paint and such and handprints on orcs makes a lot of sense because they're so crude. Whereas having this geometric pattern of triangles and such on the orcs is way too nice for the orcs. It doesn't fit with their aesthetic. Um, feel free to disagree with me, but yeah. Uh, nah, all, all these models are crap. Just utter crap. But, you know, if you like them, that's totally cool too. Like, I, don't, I don't care. You're allowed to like what you like. I'm just saying what I like, and it's not this. I have no attachment to this giant squig meta um, full of weird cybernetic parts. I don't care for, you know, overly large weapons that they're giving these orcs, these... Orcs always had comically large weapons. These are getting stupidly comically large. Uh, they've dialed them up to 11, and it does nothing for me. But then I get to the regular boys here, and I'm, I'm the polar opposite. You see, I feel these are fantastic reworks of the original orc sculpts. Or, or, like, they're the previous orc sculpts. They're not the original orc sculpts, but we had them for 25 years. They may as well be. Um, yeah, no, these look fantastic. These get everything right. It's got a great balance of they've got weapons there. There's some comical stuff, some oversized stuff. You know, you've got like the funny spiked helmet of the orc there. That's really retro. That's cool. 
they've got choppers, you know, the rocket launchers. Yeah, everything everything about them is is great. This is what I want in orcs, me personally. And tonally could not be further from the other orcs. Oh well the other orcs are snake bites, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. I I don't look at these orcs and think snake bites. I look at these orcs and think a completely different orc range. It doesn't feel like 40k orcs to me. Um, whereas I can look at other orc clans like Goths or um, Blood Axes and they look like orcs and they work for me. You know, just down to changing a color scheme here and there or an upgrade part here and there. But those guys are so busy. So much just crap, junk. It does nothing for me. And then we get down to the Death Copters, um, which I like the Death Copters. And these Death Copters probably look very familiar to people because they look very familiar to me. And then I noticed this little line up here where they said, uh, Mech Boys have been working day and night and uh, at long last proud to unveil the mighty new Death Copters. There's this little star, this little Aztrix. I thought, hmm, I wonder what that refers to. Claims that they simply found and renovated a set of plans from the legendary conflict on Black Reach were met with much protest. And then it clicked. These are the Assault on Black Reach Death Copters. So, I went and quickly had a look. Sure enough, here's the Assault on Black Reach Death Copters. And they're not exactly the same, but they're pretty, pretty damn close to being exactly the same. Uh, all they really did was add a few little details, like the little rockets on the wingtips, and they moved the skids underneath a bit further apart. And other than that, really, really similar. Right down to what the pilots are wearing, the shape of the hull of the helicopter, and uh, yeah, the, the multiple exhausts out the back. And in which case, it begs the question, why didn't they keep the Black Reach ones in production? I can only guess it's because the mold that they use for the Assault on Black Reach uh, forced them into having to cast so much stuff in that mold uh, that they didn't need to have in production that it wasn't worth it to them, that that mold had more than just Death Copters in it. Uh, it might have had Death Copters plus the Black Reach War Boss, uh, the Black Reach Boys, I'm not sure. But whatever was in it was just too much of a pain in the butt to make, so therefore they avoided it. So what they've done is they've taken those original sculpts and then tweaked them in order to create these new ones. And obviously there's going to be a new mold and all that. And even though the design existed already, I'm guessing they probably did a ground up rebuild in a lot of ways because the Black Reach one might not have been a digital sculpt. You are going back to sort of 2004, maybe 2005 off the top of my head. I'm not sure on the date for Black Reach, but... Yeah, so I don't dislike the unit at all, by the way. I think they look great. Uh, all this more traditional style orc stuff looks fantastic, and it makes me wonder why they went for this really... this big emphasis, this big choice to go with these really primitive Age of Sigma looking orcs. That's that's what they are. They, they almost would fit straight into Age of Sigma. Just cut the mechanical parts off of which there are not many. I mean, this is just so bloated with detail. I There are some models I look at and I think, I want to buy that just to paint it, and it'll be a lot of fun. Um, the Age of Sigma war boss that rides on the um, back of that weird not-basilisk thing, yeah, that, off the top of my head, is something I'd love to just paint. Now, a lot of competition-winning painters have painted that model and won competitions with it. So clearly I'm not the only one who thinks this. This, on the other hand, no one in their right mind would be painting for a competition, surely. It is just so busy. There is no focal point, no thing that draws me in and makes me want to look at this model. It, it is just visual diarrhea. It's one of the worst models I've seen in a long time. I have nothing, <laughs> nothing positive um, to say about it, only the targeting squig on its shoulder. And this, what the hell is this? So the snake bites are technical enough that they can make gun turrets and rockets and platforms and all this jazz and buzz saws, 
and they, they couldn't put an engine in. They had to have a giant squig towing them. Why? What the hell? Just stupid. And this obsession with the four-legged squigs. Why? Squigs are interesting because they're two-legged. They're this weird creature that's just mouth and, and two legs. To turn it into a four-legged creature like this turns into more of a traditional dinosaur or lizard, and it is a lot more sympathetic than a regular squig. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a crap range. This is just a crap range. I mean, if people like it, that's fine. You do you. But for me, this is not what I think when I think orcs. I, the other orc releases look fantastic, and I really want to know what they do with Octarius. Um, also, does anyone else think it's coincidental that I was speaking about this eight months ago, and then here we go, we're getting an Octarius campaign? Anyone? No? Just me? Okay. Whatever. I mean, I was the only guy talking about doing an Octarius campaign. Makes me wonder. Hmm. Anyway, um, make with the outer circle. This has been your daily dose of negativity. Make sure you have your salts. Your salts will help you survive. Water alone will not help you hydrate. See you all next time.